Hello, everyone, to another episode of Be Strong Mind. Today, I have with me absolutely incredible guest. And I gotta admit, I've been stalking her on Instagram for a, quite a while. And then I'm like, my audience need her. My girls need her in their lives because she is such a light, bright, and she is also living her truth in such a way that is truly shining such a bright light in other people's lives. So welcome, Payal. I'm so super excited to have you here today. Thank you for such an awesome intro. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. It's amazing. You know, I remember like eight years ago when I was in a dark moments of my life, when I was looking for anything online just to feel a little bit better. And I got to admit that affirmations changed my life. So I wonder, how did you come up with such a beautiful and unique idea? Idea to be posting affirmation on your Instagram account. And for anyone who is not following Pal yet, she is affirmation addict on Instagram. And it's like, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Actually, I was introduced to affirmations when I was around 12 years old. So it's been a part of my life for so long. And my first book that I read about affirmations was by Louise Hay. And I started writing them down. And like, the, I really wanted a brownie one day. First thing I manifested was a little brownie. So it was food, but it was just so like, powerful to see the thought, the power that your thoughts and words have. And when just a year ago, I was working for um, a really big consulting firm. And I was really unhappy. I did manifest it, but I was like, oh my gosh, I'm here, but it's still not what I want. So I started affirming for things and it kind of just clicked. And it was something that I needed was an app for affirmations and just like a resource that would always have affirmations. And so that's really where like the idea was born. It was almost out of my own need and something that helped me for so long. I love that. And maybe this will be a uh, heartbreaking for you, what I'm uh -huh. about to say, but I feel like you are not the only one who created something that they needed at the moment. Like my favorite people and influencers that are living a fulfilled life. When mm -hmm. I ask them like, how did you come up with doing what you're doing right now? Because it brings so much joy to you. They're like, well, I needed it. They don't say yeah. this directly, but when you're listening, that's how we can truly bring the light into this world because oh, yeah. we are doing something that really aligns with who we really are. Exactly. Like being true to who you really are. For me, like when I thought about it, all the things I manifested before, I manifested it, yes, but I like the intention was more so because it was the right thing to do, not because it really made me super happy. And so that's really the journey that I'm kind of on now is like, okay, who am I? What do I want to do? What do I want to serve? And what do I want to share? And that's so that incredible. I love that because that's what most of my clients are struggling with who I am when I'm not everything for everyone. And yes. that's the thing, like me, myself, I was following the things that were like, right. Yes. I did the school, I got married, I'm happily divorced, but I was following all the right steps and it didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And like you're saying, it's because it was not for me and about me. So what are some things that are helping you right now on your journey to really realize who you are when you're shedding off the layers of being something for other people? Yeah. For me, the biggest thing I do is obviously an affirmation. And that's just, I'm aligned with my highest self because I realize so many of the decisions I make is, as you said, because of everybody else. And even though I know better intuitively, it's kind of hard to listen to it. And so just repeating, like I'm aligned with my highest self and knowing that I'm always like protected and guided mm -hmm. because it's out of fear that we don't do it. So that's kind of like the ego, the survival mode. Mm -hmm. And so really, really aligning with my core true self. That's my biggest thing. I repeat that to myself and also just asking myself, like, does this actually make me happy? Like, it's so simple. People try and overcomplicate it. And it's really just as simple as asking yourself, like, does this make me smile or does it not? Like, mm. you can just choose yes or no. 
Oh, that's amazing. Just really keeping it simple because that's the thing. We overcomplicate, overthink, and then we are going in to this rabbit hole when we truly overcomplicate everything instead of keeping it really easy. And I love that uh, affirmations of I'm always guided and protected because that's something that I love saying to myself because when we feel or think that we get to do it all by ourselves, that's when we are really struggling because how the heck you want to figure it all out by yourself? The universe, it's so huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you feel really small and you just don't feel like you're enough. And so that's where the self-worthiness and the self-sabotage, all that kind of plays in. And that's huge. And I think everybody will always experience that just at different levels, but it's okay to experience those things. It's really like your perception. Like, do you want to take it as a lesson or do you want to take it as like shaming yourself? Cause like, even I've noticed this and I'm sure you have too, where like you think you're doing everything right. And then one thing goes wrong and you start shaming yourself for that wrongdoing. But it's like, that's a part of your lesson. Like you're always going to grow. And so and I'm trying to like embrace all aspects of it, not only the good, but even the not so good and see where my lessons are. Oh my gosh, that's so powerful because I feel that like you said, no matter what stage of your life you are, it's like new level, different devil. Yeah. Because you thought like, oh, I'm not good enough to leave my corporate job. I'm not good enough to have a podcast. Who am I to be a coach? Like so many questions when we're trying to dim our light. And once you overcome that, then you're like, oh, who am I to be charging? And it comes always to the worthiness. So what would be some affirmations to increase the sense of the worthiness to knowing that you are more than enough? Yeah, I'll give you some affirmations. But one thing I also really, really want to precursor is sometimes like we have to figure out what like thoughts are making you feel unworthy because like, yes, I can say I'm worthy. I'm worthy. But like, listen to what resistance comes up when you say that. So then you can create your own affirmations for those thoughts too. Cause you only be able to move forward so much until you rewire those limiting beliefs as most of us know, or blockages, whatever you choose to call them. And so, but other affirmations for worthiness is I am worthy and I'm the only one's approval that I need because a lot of approval we look for is outside, but you really, it's your own approval and your own judgment that matters the most. Yes. It's, and I think I made a post about it it was yesterday or today, you are Uh the one you've been waiting for. Because we are always waiting for someone else to tell us, yeah, that's a great idea. Yes, you can do that. Yes, go for it. And the thing is that nobody ever will see the world like you do with your eyes, with your own experience. And so I, I love that you say create affirmations that resonate with you. Because mm-hmm. I remember, and that's how I started my journey with Louise Hay. Really? So it, oh my gosh, it, me too. She is the one, because I remember when I was in a darkest place in my life, like eight years ago, when I'm like, why I'm even here? I really don't matter. And I was looking online for help. I found her video where she says, go to the mirror and say, I love you. Mm-hmm. I didn't even get up to do it because I didn't. I just like, why am I going to waste my time? Yeah. And that was kind of like eye opener for me that I'm always waiting for other people to love me, mm-hmm. make me feel worthy. And I don't. And you know, Pyle, I remember when I started with Louis Hay affirmations, I didn't believe it. I didn't feel it. What do you do when you're like, yep. yeah, sure. Like you're writing it. You have your sticky notes everywhere. And you're like, it's just like, I don't feel it. What do yeah. you do? Okay. So two sides of that. One is at one point you have to either, you can play a game with yourself and be like, okay, I'm going to test this out. Like no doubts, no nothing. But that's really hard for most people. It was hard for me too. And so the thing to understand is like why it works. And so understanding that your subconscious mind, the more it hears something, the more it accepts it as truth. And so the more you repeat it, the more you can do it. And it's also asking yourself like, what is the harm? Like, why is that bad? And where is the judgment coming from? Where's the ego playing? 
leaning into that because what I do when I'm like, man, I cannot believe it. I'm like, okay, why don't I believe it? Like ask yourself those questions because you're just like, yeah, I don't believe it. That's okay. You're accepting it. Like whatever you accept is what you will receive evidence of in your life. So if I want to believe that I'm a failure, I will literally receive evidence of that in my life. But if I want to believe that I am super successful, I will receive evidence. So it's understanding like the core power of your beliefs. And then I feel like that's what helps because a lot of people, they're just like, oh, like repeat it to yourself. It'll manifest. But that's really hard for a lot of people to digest until you know, like the science behind it. Yeah, that's really powerful. And I love that because like you said, it it has those two sides and Mm -hmm. What do you find helps you to strengthen that belief? And I'm just asking your own opinion because for everyone, it's going to be different. Is it the writing it? Is it the saying it out loud? Is it recording it and listening to it? What is it for you? For me, uh, that's so funny because I literally recorded a podcast about that this morning. (laughs) For me, it's writing it down. Um, And I think that's because that's the way I started it when I was younger because literally for when I was younger, it was so hard for me to go in the mirror and say that. Now I can so easily because it's been such a part of my life, but still to this day, the most comfortable and still so powerful for me is writing down affirmations. Mm. Um, I hate hearing my own voice. And so I never used to record them. Now I have to record them for other people. So it's so funny how things come back to you. But for me saying it out loud, it was almost like I would come up with excuses like, oh, there's people in the house or this or that, or I don't have time. But for journaling, I would do that at my corporate job. You can do that anytime, (laughs) anywhere. So to me, it's like the least resistance was always journaling. And that's the least resistance I feel for people who are starting out too. Because you take notes or you write down your to-do list, you can write down three affirmations that you really want to see in your life. And so for me, writing it down is equally as powerful. I love that. And I love that. You know, I feel like, and I was telling this to my clients, I feel like when we are journaling, we are bringing together the physical and the non-physical because Mm -hmm. our thoughts and our feelings, when we journal, I feel like it's, it's coming to life. And do you ever like go back to your journal to, Oh yeah. Really? You do? I always, You should see my shelf. It's like 20 (laughs) journals. I'm like, you know, girl, when I retire, maybe I will do that. Oh, yeah. I look back and I literally like there's this thing. Have you heard of scripting? I'm sure you've heard of scripting. Yeah. So I didn't even remember doing this. But last year at my corporate job, I like scripted a day in my dream life at that time, which was just working for myself. I had no idea what I was going to do, how I was going to do it. And then I, re- I came across it like a few weeks ago because I my journal was finished. So I just like flipped through it. And it was literally that exact day outlined to the T, like no detail missing, completely exact. And I had no idea how I was going to get to so many of these places in that experience. Oh my so God. I think it's so I powerful. That. I yeah. love that. And I remember when I was years ago listening to Tony Robbins, he was describing how he saved his, uh, it was like a journal, but with a picture of his ideal home. Mm-hmm. And then he found it in like his garage when he was like unpacking, but it was like, I don't know, it was like 20 years later, like his first dream home and he found it. So it's incredible. Oh yeah. Like the power of everything in unison, you know, like to me, affirmations, it's a lot of it is writing it down in the techniques. But I think what people forget is like every word you're speaking is an affirmation because like the universe, your mind, everything is always listening. So I think people forget that, but I think doing like understanding that plus like the power of visual things and the power of just like setting an intention, even like all of that in unison is amazing. And people think it's so complex, but it doesn't have to be like, it can be as simple as like asking and it's given. That's a, I'm pretty sure that's a book by some. Yes, it is. Yeah. Abraham Hicks. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like very book title. And so it's so true that we forget, like we just want to overcomplicate and you want like a morning routine. And granted, I love morning routines, but we just want like everything to be so complex because that's how we're wired in today's day and age. But if you think back to like humankind and our roots, we're very simple 
like our life is supposed to be simple and creative and just following your joy. And I think people really forget that, but I'm really happy because I think now it's shifting back more to that. Like people are starting to work less or work is more flexible. You can go home and things like that. So it's getting into, I think, back to our roots, which I think is awesome. I absolutely love it. I'm like, did this girl read my journal? I'm like, <laughs> talking like she did because that's what I truly believe in going back to the basic, going back to the nature, listening to yourself, like cleaning your environment around you. So you go back to the simplicity, having all that makes your heart happy and not needing anything to be happy with you. Exactly, exactly. And that I think people forget that manifestation in life, like it's always going to be like a paradox and polarity because you need both those extremes to understand and feel the things. So sometimes people are like, how can I like really desire what I want and surrender at the same time? But you have to understand that that's kind of the art of it. And that's the art of life. And, it's, you know, like that's always going to be there. It's just, do you choose to embrace it and have fun and play or be frustrated because you're not doing it exactly right. So it's just a perception. I love that you're reading my mind. Thank you so much because that was my <laughs> next question. How do you allow it? You know, I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh, she's so perfect. That's so <laughs> Okay, let's say that I've been like making time for my journaling and I'm writing about my ideal life. I even like in tune in it. And right now your reality around you, it's not it. You are struggling financially, you're in mm -hmm. the environment. How do you let go and how do you allow the things to come? Because the environment, it's just not responding to it yet. Yeah. So sometimes my practical, like the most practical answer is distract yourself. Sometimes take a step back, like don't journal about it for a day because sometimes our human minds are tend to get really obsessive. So if you can't stop being obsessive and it's hard for you to genuinely surrender, I practice gratitude. Like I, I, my biggest thing is like, okay, I'm thankful for my breath, for my fingers. I just go down that list and there's no way you can't feel good after that. But if that doesn't align with you, literally distract yourself, like take a step back for a few days and just don't think about it because it's still going to happen. And then once something happens without you thinking about it, that's where you're like, okay, I know this works. So I feel like for some people who have like the suspicion and the doubts, that's kind of the best advice to give them, like try not doing anything and it'll still happen. Oh, I love that. Distract yourself. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's really powerful. So let me ask you one last question. Imagine okay. that you are walking just outside, beautiful sunny day. You are feeling incredible. You're radiant. And there is a beautiful young woman walking against you and she pause you and she was like i'm so sorry to interrupt you but i truly love your energy you are so radiant i wish i could be like you what would be the one thing you tell her so she can find this inner peace and radiance everything you need is within you already that's beautiful that's yeah i think that's like the most powerful statement because we're so used to looking for outside things outside tools but these are all things coming from within and people forget that and you don't mm -hmm. give yourself enough credit. And I truly, truly believe like self-worth, self-awareness and like just self-love is genuinely the core and like you won't be able to get too far until you acknowledge those things. And so just understanding like you already have everything you need. You don't need to change. You don't, you're not missing anything. Like you're great. You're perfect just the way you are and you can get to exactly where you want to be without changing anything. Mm -hmm. I love that. So one last thing, because it brings the curiosity out of me. Uh -huh. How do you tune into yourself? How do you tune into finding that power within you? Because very often when we are in a dark place in our lives, we can see that. Mm -hmm. For me, personally, I take a couple of deep breaths. Sorry, I just got a bunch of microphone things. I'll read it. Okay. So for me, what I do is I take a few deep breaths and I'm like, what feels good to me? What does my higher self want me to do? And just even if I feel like a tingling sensation or just like a cool wind or something like that's my sign that, okay, I'm here. Like, it's just sometimes you need like an outside validation or outside like support. And I'm a big believer in like energy and angels and all that too. And so 
you feel that if you let it. And so if you just sit quietly for even like 30 seconds, you don't need to meditate, just breathe and like realize how amazing your breath and your life force is. I think that for me is like a big game changer and just really makes me remember like something inside me is making me breathe. And that's amazing. Mm, That's beautiful. Thank you so much. And so I know that people can be stalking you on your Instagram. That's (laughs) where I will definitely send them because I'm like every single day looking like, what does she have to say today? (laughs) Thank you so much for everything you're doing. But if there is any other place that you love to hang out, where would it be? I would go to my web- website that has like, like little, little posts or pod- podcasts, like the hub of, of everything. That is action com. Beautiful. I will make sure to leave it in the show notes. And thank you again for your thank presence you. and all your work. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me.